we have the ideas of inheritance all floating around our heads now. We've talked a little bit about what the code has going on. Let's actually talk about and show building some of that code. At this point, we're building a very basic project. So we're just going to build a plain old new Java project inside of here. So you can see, I can say new project here. I can come new project from this button. I can right click and say new project. There's always two or three different ways in these tools I can do anything. So I come new basic old Java application here. And the project, I can call it inherit, inherit, oops, inheritance example. That's just what I'm going to name it. You're going to name it based off of your project that's coming up. So in our ex inherited example project, it's going to come up with a main class. And we're going to need this main class eventually. So we're going to leave this behind for a minute. But we need to start with building our inheritance hierarchy. And we want to start with the hierarchy we talked about building in our modeling demo. You have an assignment you're going to be able to do. You're going to do something in your discussion board for that. That's what that previous demo we talked about is. And then now we're going to take that hierarchy and we're going to turn it into code. So the start of that hierarchy was the person class. So we're going to create a new Java class called person. All right. Um, it's just what I named it before. I actually probably could have a better name for it than person because remember our hierarchy came together and we had a customer on one side and we had an employee on this side. Um, and a guest um, and, and the, you know, that came inside of there. But, you know, it's it's about refining it over time, but I'm going to leave it where we left off just so it's nice and clear. So that's what I'm going to create the person class. So I'm going to dump some of this stuff up pop as the person class. Now, I can't have a person log into my website. I can't have a person buy stuff from my website. I can either have a guest buy it from my website or I can have a customer or some type of customer buy from my website. And that means, based off of that, I'm going to make the person class abstract because there's not enough information from the person on its own to really help me do what I want to do um, when I'm working in this context. So I'm going to make the class abstract. So public abstract person. Now, in your assignment, the expectation is you have an abstract class. The top of your hierarchy should be abstract. Mostly just to know that you know what the word abstract means and how it, it applies. We're going to get to this a little bit more as we go. But that's where we're going to start abstract. All right, besides that, whatever else we want to know about a person. Now, again, we talked about first name, last name. But that's not something we know about all people because guests, we don't have that information yet. So what we do know about all guests, to all visitors to the site, and maybe that's a better name is visitor, um, is they have a, we'll call it a string, an IP address that they came in. All right, so when I do this work, I can um, go through and I can add in getters and setters and all that sort of stuff. Now, if you haven't used NetBeans all that much before, if you didn't see this before, you can right click it over here and go to this insert code option. You can notice here, there's also the the key tab of Alt and Insert. So if I hold down the Alt key, I hit the Insert key, it pops up a menu just like it would have if I right-click and said Insert Code. And so what I can add inside of here is Getter and Setter. So all at once, I can say, poof, there's my Getter and my Setter for setting the IP address. Now, beyond that, I can do a two-string method. Now, the two-string method is what takes an object and prints out its contents. And I can add my own two-string method to customize what those contents look like. And I can also do that, right-click here, and say, um, insert code, and then say, two-string. And it'll ask me which fields I want to generate the two-string for. So the IP address, I'm going to include that in my two-string. And so you can see now for the person class, the IP address is this. This is the default. I can change this formatting however I want to. It's you know just whatever text formatting you want to do to print it out. But it's good enough for us to get started with. So there's the person class itself. Within our hierarchy, we have to have subclasses. We have to have specific specific classes that realize this. So generalization, person, specification is something more detailed. So we have a new specialization, a new Java class. I'm right-clicking here, new Java class. And so we have a, um, a guest 
and I can get rid of this stuff up there. And so the most important thing about a guess is it needs to extend out the person class. And I'm going to use that exact vocabulary here. Extends. See, see how the word became blue when I put it right there? That means when it becomes blue, it's a keyword in Java. It has special meaning in Java. Uh, extends person right there. Now, if I do nothing else to this, I can tell you that this person class has an IP address and it has the behavior to print out that information. All right, so that is a good start to this. And I actually want to pause real quick and I want to test this code. One of the things I'm a big believer in is I, I call it coding small. I want to not write 100,000 lines of code, 10 lines of code. I don't want to copy 15 lines of code. I don't want to copy five lines of code. I want you to have hands on keyboard typing in each line of code because anytime something goes red, then there's a problem. It's a problem that has to be fixed, and you have to fix it. You have to understand how to fix it. Nobody, I mean, that's the job of a coder is to write code and, more importantly, to fix code. They spend much more time fixing code than writing code. Um, so let's come back to our inheritance example class here. And let's start real simple. Let's create an instance of this code. So I can have a person P is equal to new person. And you see the red that's showing up? It gives me a very clear message here. Person is abstract, cannot be instantiated. It's because I made it abstract. I can't make a person. You know, go give me a person to do the work. Well, you're either going to give me a guest or a customer. That's the reality of this. There's, that, there's something more specific. So you have to be careful in the tool. If I hit control space here, at this point, um, you can see it did something kind of funny. If I hit control space, it added some curly brackets down below. So what the heck was this? Well, this is the tool being smarter than it should be. And certainly smarter than you are at this point, because this is something called an anonymous inner class. Um, it's a way Java can solve problems like this. It's a very powerful and kind of bad thing for you to understand right now. More importantly is you type the code, you should see this error. And don't use the, 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 the fancy tools to fill there. So I, what I did right there is I hit Alt and Enter, and that pops up an option to be able to see implement all abstract methods, uh, split declaration and assignment. You see, there's it's given me some stuff that you may or may not know what the heck it's doing because it's trying to do something much more powerful than we need right now. But the reality is what I can do is I can say is a new guest. Now, that's perfectly legal right there. A person class can point to a guest object. I can make guest G is equal to new guest, same way. I can build a guest. When I build a guest, I get a person. When I build a person, I can't build a person, so I can't do that, right? I can say P is equal to G. A person can be assigned to a guest. We saw this in the slides. I cannot say G is equal to P because, you see, incompatible types. A person cannot be converted into a guest because a person might not be a guest. They could be a customer, and if they're a customer, then they're a different type of object. I cannot convert a dog into a cat. I, I mean, they're, they're both animals, but I can't convert one into another. If I ask for a dog, you give me a cat, it's going to be a problem. If I ask for an animal, you give me a cat or a dog, it's fine. All right, so given this, let's just go out and say system.out.println p, and then let's do system.out.println g. Um, by the way, I never gave an IP address to either one of these, so let's do each of that here real quick. p.setIP address is first. Because I can put any text inside of there. g.setIP address is equal to second. All right, so I want to add some data inside of there. So this is the main program we're going to be building. We're going to advance on it a little bit more as we go. This is the main program we're going to be building. Just basically creating a class, creating, uh, you know, so we, we created the super class, we created the subclass, and then we're just going to be printing out the two string for, for the class that we created. So let me go ahead and run this now. And you can see, it takes a second, person first, person second.
So the two string, the you know, guest has no code in it, nothing at all, but it gets the code from that came from extending out the person class. That's a start. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to build this code. Either if you're very new to Java, you're not very comfortable, build exactly this code. Go line by line. Don't copy the code. I'm actually going to share the code out there for you to work with. But don't copy it. Take this code line by line and type it in. You know, see the errors. Fix the errors. If you have errors and you can't make them go away, email me and ask for help. Find somebody local. Ask for help. Go to the discussion board. Ask for help. That's the only way to learn this stuff is to work through it. If you don't have, like if you're trying to, you know, build a building, if you don't have a hammer in your hand, how can you ever learn to train your muscles to swing a hammer? That's what you have to do now is train your brain, train your fingers, train yourself to know, understand the tool and the code by creating errors. You know, when you swing a hammer wrong and you hit the wall instead of the nail, you, you learn, you, you grow from that. That's what you have to do here. So I'm going to pause here. We're going to come back and build more on this, but I want you to go do this right now and then go back on to the next video once you have everything working just like you saw here.